Next section. Illustrating stanzas. Two British films that came out during the late 1990s, Brassed Off and The Full Monty, focus on the effects of deindustrialization on communities and masculine identities. As economic geographers who had been studying industrial restructuring since the mid-1970s, we were drawn to these films and found them to be equally emotively powerful. What we found fascinating and what clarified our subsequent interest in the issues of, st of stances toward thinking in politics was the very different affects they produced. It was as though each offered a different extreme in the range of feelings that one could have about the world and its vicissi vicissitudes. Brassed Off presented the negative affect of despair and righteous anger associated with a, sh with a strong theory of deindustrialization while the full Monty bubbled over with positive affects of surprise and hopeful opening to the possibility in line with a reparative reading of industrial change. The full Monty hit us with the rec recognition of the kind of positive affect we want to cultivate in our politics. It provoked us to, to begin a weak reading what wells up or erupts in the body to shape political possibilities and to think about how these emergences can be cultivated. It prompted us to clarify a potential relationship between class and community becoming. It both demonstrated how we could work on ourselves to become readers slash theorists of possibility and was itself the thing demonstrated, a set of affect-driven movements that shift stances and open subjects to new becomings. In the varied responses to this film, however, and in literature that quickly built up around it and brassed off, we saw the stark outline of the stance that our post-capitalist political imaginary was up against. Brief synopsis. Both films are set in English working-class communities undergoing deindustrialization. Brastoff takes place in a coal mining town where the mine is slated to close. We see the losing battle to keep the pit open through the eyes of the miners who are part of the grimly colliery band, a brass band that becomes the symbolic voice of opposition in the film. After the mine has closed, they go on to win the national band competition in Albert Hall. This gives the terminally ill bandmaster a platform and an audience for the harrowing speech of protest and lament that closes the film. Although Brassed Off stretches a love story across the management worker divide and coats itself with a thin layer of working class humor, the principal affects evoked are pathos and rage. At the end, we are left with powerful and painful feelings of loss. Whereas Brassed Off has a documentary feel, The Full Monty is a utopian fantasy that starts sometime after the closing of the steelworks in Sheffield. The unemployed steelworkers spend their time at Job Club, or pilfering scrap metal, or hanging out on the street, feeling like yesterday's news. But when a group of male strippers comes to town, some of the men who see the crowd of screaming women and the huge box office draw decide that they can do it too. The film tells the story of six men who come together out of mainly financial desperation to become a collectivity of performers and friends. It ends in their striptease before a crowd of admiring, excising, and valuable women, who, where they take it all off and become reborn as, quote, workers and as, quote, men. The Full Monty offers us surprise and hope while providing the joyful and forward-looking finale that is the hallmark of comedy. Diverging Readings what has attached us to these films are the div diverging interpretations of what they have to say about economic politics. Many seem determined to read the films as realist texts cited upon the common ground of deindustrialization, with Brassed Off providing the awful truth of the process and the full Monty trivializing, though unable ultimately to pa palliate it. The full Monty is variously seen as a film about the commodification of male bodies, a farce about the hopelessness of livelihood replacement for working class males, or a testimony to the victories of capital and Thatcherism in the final years of the century. For Slavoj Žižek, The Full Monty and Brassed Off are two ways of saying the same thing. Both films are about coming to terms with catastrophic loss of male identity, employment and livelihood, the grounds of community, the working class tradition, the modernist po political project of social, social transformation, the struggle itself. Brassed Off shows us men gripped by melancholia who continue, continue their colliery band despite the closure of the mine, affirming the empty symbolic form, quote, as a sign of fidelity to, them, to the content, quote, even as their ways of life and politics slip from their grasp. The Full Monty does exactly the other way around. These men confront and indeed embrace the d disintegration of their male digni dignity, 
stripping before an audience of women, they heroically abandon their remnant pride in a sublime and spiritual rite of humiliation. Zizek reads these films for what they say about left politics in the post-socialist era, arguably from a paranoid theoretical stance. Their despairing message, he concludes, is that there's no viable way forward, no politics confronting global capitalism, the program for its defeat or replacement. For Zizek, these, this absence suggests the impossibility of undermining, quote, the global capitalist system, quote, at the present time while the, the economy remains, quote, depoliticized, quote, seen as a dom domain of neutral logics and requirements and uh, ostensibly removed from the sphere of responsibility and choice. We agree with Zizek that the full Monty and Brast off are about the crisis of modernist class politics, but whereas Zizek sees the films as similarly configured around loss, we have always experienced the full Monty since our ecstatic first viewing in 1970, 1997, a film, and one that suggests a way forward as well as an opening for a postmodern politics of class. When we speak about class and politics here, we are not speaking of social groups in which individuals identify as working or ruling class. Nor are we thinking about a modernist vision of politics involving two great classes struggling over the fate of the world or the economy. Rather, we are understanding class as a relation or a process, a process of performing, appropriating, and distributing surplus labor. See chapter 3 for more discussion of this conception. The class politics we are thinking of is focused on questions about who appropriates the wealth produced in a social labor process, how wealth is distributed, and what kinds of societies it potentiates and sustains, and how non-capitalist class relations might be fostered. It is oriented toward class becoming and transformation, rather than toward identities and struggles defined by capitalism and the traditional left. Clearly, any reading of these films is a political act that involves making ethical choices for one reading or another, for one rea reality or another, for one set of options or another world of possibility. Each reading is an, an each reading is an ingredient, a, con a condiment, a contribution to the feast of social possibilities that we all continue to produce and be nourished by. In what follows, we offer our own idiosyncratic reading as an experimental demonstration of what a weak reading with reparative motives might look like. The reader can be the judge of whether this experiment works to generate positive aff affect. Using, using stills and descriptions of clips from both films, but primarily, primarily from the Fulmonti, we aim to remove you momentarily from the world as we know it, where post-capitalism appears as an impossibility, where, cl where class politics is associated with nostalgia for the past and no present project of becoming, and where many of us experience a crisis of desire for communism if we ever had one. We begin at the, that negative point of departure with a clip from Brast Off, which, like the Fulmonti, ends with a performance. In this case, the National Band Competition Concert in Albert Hall, where the trophy has been won by the Grimley Colliery Band. Brassed Off is a film in a, in about closure. Not only the closure of the pit, but closure around a particular masculine identity, the closing of the era of working class politics, the closed and closed off nature of truth. Whether it be the truth about the pit, household finances, health and death, or male emotions, the Fulmonti, by contrast, is about openness and becoming, more visibly the becoming of new masculine selves who are physically aware and sexually diverse, in new gender roles and economic relations. It is about stripping away the myths and falsehoods and the barring of the truth. These are radically different films, despite their similar settings and multiple points of connection. Brassed off angrily polices identity boundaries between men and women, workers and management, us and them. Quote, Why's your bird got a management logo on her key ring? Quote. The film confronts us with the violence of belonging, pulling us toward resentment and righteous outrage, the signature emotions of modernist class politics. The full Monty gives us instead the relief and joy of, re of rec recognition, of otherness as well as sameness, of self-value, of economic of economic sorry to skip a whole page of economic and class possibility as something that can cannot be negated or denied it is this buoyant emotional substrate as much as the storyline and characterization that prompts us to read the film for lessons in a politics of becoming 
On one level, the crisis of modernist class politics is a crisis of desire, and where the two films diverge most is in the representation of what crisis. In Brassed Off, desire is stuck on keeping the minds open, or being employed, on solidarity based on shared male experience, including that of capitalist exploitation, on keeping alive communities built on exploitation as well as life-destroying work. Desire is stalemated in a fixation on the demand of the capitalist other. For labor and for an, an, an oh, ton twister, for labor and for an antagonistic political complement, the quote working class. The bandmaster recognizes the significance of labor's contribution to building and sustaining the larger national community and the communities around the mines but he sees no alternative to the exploitative capitalist form of this constitutive relation. So as they celebrate labor's contribution, the miners are momentarily reliving the, quote, satisfaction with dissatisfaction that has been their principal relation of, to working life. With the closure of the pits, they have experienced a crisis of this compromised form of enjoyment, a crisis of jouissance the complex French word for pleasure that is tied up in knots by others' demands and desires. Their response is to fix upon restoring their former modes and means of satisfaction. Their prohibition of the worker identity has eroticized this identity in retrospective reflection, conjoining it with an image of quintessential manhood. Their fantasy is to reclaim this now prohibited state. Anxiously fixated on a bygone capitalist order, brassed off acts out the fundamental fantasy of loss, staying with anger at the closure of the minds within the experience of masculine crisis slash castration. What is so adventurous about the Fulmonti, on the other hand, is that it begins with the hollowness of eroticized employment. Job club has done a job on the job, it seems. And with the acceptance of masculine crisis, quote, a few years and men won't exist, will be extinct obsolete dinosaurs, quote, it begins with castrated subjects and shows us a process of re re-eroticization, the forging of new desires, satisfaction, and masculinities freed from an anchor in a certain form of work. The Fulmonti liberates desire in two sorts of ways, and this liberation is probably what has made the film problematic for so many people, given its setting in, de in devastating loss. Most obviously, with the closure of the steel mill, the employed subjects experience a death, an interruption of subjection to capitalism, and thus the opportunity to do to be something else, though what that might be does not readily present itself. But their freedom is not just dependent on the withdrawal of capital and the symbolic death of the employed subject, it is also an internal potential of the subject, who is never fully subjected. Liberation inheres in the failures of, of subjection, the potential of the subject to be other, the potential for unexpected changes of direction. Jane Bennett sees this as the potential for enchantment involving, quote, the idea of human bodies as an active and potentially disruptive force. Enchantment is, quote, a mood of lively and intense engagement with the world cons that consists in a mixed bodily state of joy and disturbance, a transitory sensuousness condition dense and intense enough to stop you in your tracks and toss you onto new terrain to move you from the actual world to its virtual possibilities. Referring to, quote, the spunk of swerve of bodies, Bennett evokes a body with a mind of its own. The full Monty presents quite a number of moments when bodies swerve away from familiar forms of subjection and toward alternative, alternative ways of being. 